Here we're going to look at what we call a spherical conductor, spherical conductor with a cavity inside. And what's often confusing here is not that the problem is difficult to work with, but that we sometimes confuse it with a different circumstance, a different situation where we actually have another charge inside the cavity. If there's no charge inside the cavity, all of the charge of the conductor will reside near the edge of the conductor and no charge will reside on the inside of the conductor. Whoop, I just erased that part right there. Okay, there we go. And so therefore, whether or not there's a cavity there or not really makes no difference when we look at it from the Gauss's law perspective. So if we draw a Gaussian surface, like a spherical shaped Gaussian surface inside a conductor and including the cavity inside, notice that in that case there is no charge inside the Gaussian surface. And if we then look at this right here, we can then say, well then E dot the area, or times the area of the Gaussian surface, that will be equal to Q inside divided epsilon sub naught, but Q inside is zero divided by epsilon sub naught, so therefore the electric field is simply equal to zero divided by A times epsilon sub naught. And so it doesn't matter how big the area of the Gaussian surface is, it can be inside the cavity, it can be including the cavity, all the way out to the edge of the uh, conductor here, the electric field always will be equal to zero. So there's no electric field inside the conductor, whether or not there's a cavity in there or not. So that's why don't confuse that with the case where there's actually a charge inside the cavity, which I will do in the next video. So there you can see inside is equal to zero. What about outside the conductor? What if you want to know the electric field, like say right there? E is equal to question mark. Well, it will be directed perpendicular out from the surface. It will be this far away from the inside of the conductor. Let's call that R. This here, of course, will be the radius of the conductor. Let's call that big R. And so in this case, what the equation then will become, it will be the integral, the surface integral of E dot dA, which is equal to the Q inside divided by epsilon sub naught. And let's just say for a moment that there's Q amount of charge on the surface of the conductor. Then the equation becomes as follows, the electric field strength at this point times the area of the Gaussian surface, which means we need a Gaussian surface right here where the edge of the Gaussian surface is where we want to know the strength of the electric field. So we're looking for the electric field over here now. And so in that case, we'll get E times the area, which will be 4 pi r squared, is equal to the Q inside, which is Q divided by epsilon sub naught. And then what happens is, we put this down here, we get the electric field strength is equal to Q divided by 4 pi epsilon sub naught times r squared, and of course 1 over 4 pi epsilon sub naught, by now we all know, that's equal to k, so E equals k times Q divided by r squared, and that of course is the very common equation that we're now familiar with, with the electric field at distance r away from the center of the charge, it's going to be equal to kq over r squared. So outside the sphere, the electrical, or we should say the spherical conductor with charge q, it's going to be that. Inside, it's going to be zero. Just to make sure we all got that. All right, that's how you do that. On the next video, we'll put a charge inside, and then we'll see what happens instead.